So we're doing our weekly relationship flow by Ellie Goldsmith on a late, late Thursday night at the end of a busy, busy week. Didn't have time to do it during the day. And unfortunately, my son got run over today and actually was tonight. So what did my holy soulmate do? She didn't just like say, oh, you know, come on, you go. She just literally got dressed and ran out of the house to go be there for him. She didn't even bring a mask. She was so busy. Thankfully, her, you know, head covering, like, had wrapped around it's her face as well. So she's in no issue with that. And she actually looks pretty cool. But the point is that, um, that you know, sometimes you, you plan certain things and then Hashem, you know, the, the flow is different. So you plan to have it. We were just chilling at the end of the week and just taking it easy and about to go to sleep. And then we get the call from my son and everything's in a different flow right now. So for tomorrow, we've got guests, um, a new potential couple, and hopefully, I don't mind saying, you know, the Mordechai Ben Avram is going to be hosted on our Brazil of Israel podcast, um, and what is our future, and our Unity Flow podcast, we're going to hopefully put it both there, and with Biv Rav Shalom Arish, we're going to do our Amona class together with him. So he's coming, the Shabbos by us, and... You know, we're going to have to figure out tomorrow, like, you know, how to get hold of food. And my wife's already told me she's making the hollers anyway, and et cetera, et cetera. And, but I have to get hold of some stuff. And I told my son, oldest son, who was about to go out late, I was like, please don't go out late so you can be around to be more helpful. Not like sleeping all day like teenagers do. So please, God, you know, like, you have to sort of roll with the flow. And that's like me being more real, talking about real situations, not just concepts. And thankfully, I have a holy wife, you know, a dedicated soulmate who, when these kind of things happen, she just like intuitively goes to do the right thing. And, you know, and I can be supportive lying in my bed. <laughs> but anyway, the point is that uh, um, they're going to be on their way home soon, so I might have to cut this short. Um, but I was discussing with my wife a lot of important things today, a soulmate, and we are working through like the whole idea of self-belief, self-esteem, self-worth. We spoke about it last week. And also like really strengthening the inner voice to do, to accomplish. We were speaking about Ayn Tava and my having a good eye and my Muna flow and also the Unity Flow podcast. And we see over there that the concept of thinking good about people, but it really comes back. And that's what came out when we spoke about it again with the rabbi and his a beautiful class like in the unity flow we spoke about it the idea of speaking positively about you know oneself about thinking positively and having a good eye in oneself and recognizing one's godliness and strengths and it really came out of everything like even uh zoom chat that i had this week with a whole bunch of musicians and music people and music children who grew up in famous people's homes like rolling stone manager or who's manager one of the homes they grew up and it was very you know challenging and they ended up with a lot of like you know baggage and you know they were talking about it how it really wasn't simple like to the most extreme level and even though one thinks you know the hollywood music world is you know must be so great obviously everyone really knows deep down and based on the realities of how most of life is spent it's not so great so anyway this girl was like in a real state and she managed to through therapy and finding more spirituality to find her inner voice and to be able to get to the point where she could sing and she had the strength to overcome all the trauma of seeing singing as something that which ruined her life because the whole music business was already a nightmare to turn it around to how it could build her life um to face her you know demons face her darkness and and overcome the trauma and be able to then sing and not see it as something that's destructive but as like a ability to you know sing for when she buried her family and and they were passed away and she was able to sing at her burials and you know for, you know this is you know this is her experience so obviously you know we have koisha and all this stuff but the point is that on our side like we have to be empowering like we're speaking to a woman tonight about how much you know she's in the music business and wishes she could have more opportunity to perform and i think that's really important for the future of couples and relationships especially in this generation 2020 toshin pay and the way the Baba Chirebbe spoke about these kind of things, they just sort of together. It was funny because I was standing, as I was talking to this woman tonight in the music business, and I was looking at a chuppah of my Rebbe, and that moment the color was 
going around the husband, you know, the the bride, the chosen, and the, the bride is going around doing the seven times the circle that we make in our customs in the chuppah, underneath, you know, the wedding cap and canopy, and I was just telling her that moment, and that's what, you know, just before I saw that, I was just telling her, and I, you know, sort of was like the perfect way to end the conversation about women empowerment and music and unity and chesed, kindness, inspiration, and all the kind of things, the projects I'm trying to work on. And I was just telling her, like, in the, our generation, that we need to empower women, and that's, that was the idea of the Babachi Rebbe, that the women will be surrounding the men, that they'll have much more empowerment and strength, and they'll actually be the ones who will, we have to, you know, make room and, and be humble in our own way, in our man way, to give them that prominence that they, in this time that they're going to start to have and to realize that before when the Mashiach comes, the Messiah comes, we'll start to hear, you know, a bit more of the cold color, we'll start to hear the voice of the color, the, you know, the, the woman's voice will get stronger and we have to allow it to sort of come forth a bit more than up until now. I mean, who are we to allow? But in our own, you know, man sort of, you know, trying to control like the way the you know the home and stuff even though we have some sort of authority and some level you know given to us by god to be responsible and support our family but in the end nowadays you even see that that's changing as well so we have to like allow the reality of of a certain or a certain like the levana will, will it says the moon will become as big as the sun and they describe the sun like the man is like the one giving over the light but when Mashiach comes the when the messiah comes the moon will actually be bigger uh, or as big as the, as the sun and it will give off its own light so the certain reality of the woman who's described as the moon will will shine its own light and be much beer and give over and influence and that's the idea of kokos and kokala the voice of the bride and the groom and that, the, just realizing the truth of that the it's time for us to allow the woman to to shine more and make more space and relationship for that and that is a flow that's going on in the world right now not to fight the change and obviously you know there are going to be people who resist it and therefore we have to be you know patient and respectful for people to get there but the point is that slowly slowly the reality of a woman's role in in the relationship and understanding you know whatever level of you know woman or man you are that you have to give that space for the development of someone else can also give and and be influential and and have a, a role and opportunity to to be out there in the world and create a you know a more bigger light. So anyway, I think my wife and son will be getting home now from the hospital, so I'm gonna go deal with that. And I appreciate you listening in. I wish you all a beautiful Shabbos and a good relationship flow that you should both shine in your relationships, and that will shine to your children, to your to the world. And we should only have good news and good health in this difficult time. And, you know, please go, my son, Aaron Yosef, and Masha, Shabbat Fosh Shlema, should have a full recovery. And we'll speak again in our relationship flow. I'm looking forward to hear your feedback on it. Thank you.